<coughs> Alrighty. <sighs> you guys know how we do this. So uh, if you're new to the channel, this is what to expect with these uh, style of videos. Uh, when it comes down to overviews and reviews, we're going to do brand and model. Intended audience price tag, external build, internal build, additional features that I want to talk about. First impressions, which is usually my out of the box impressions, my theories of use, initial performance, which could be include like close testing and probably my initial gameplay. And then and later on in the future, we'll actually come back and like within a year and come back and do a full long term performance evaluation of this thing or of the, of the particular replica. So therefore, like I always say, I'm going to give you all the information you need right now in order that you need to know before you purchase the uh, this replica and any other replicas that I decide to do overviews on on this channel. So let's get started. So what do we have here? Man, okay. So we have the Double Eagle Dex 556. This is from the UTR series, which is the Ultra Tactical Rifle series. This is the newer, uh, the newer uh, addition to the series. Um, this is going to be the product number is going to be M923. Uh, so 23G, excuse me, M923G, um, and that's pretty much what you're going to be getting. You're going to be getting an AEG. This is an AEG. Uh, this is a very well built AEG, by the way. Um, and like I said, and like I always say with the Double Eagle products, Double Eagle tends to tater, cater to uh, both uh, beginners and veterans uh, presenting us with the mid-end replicas at a budget-end price. So mid-tier replicas at a budget-tier price tag. And uh, with that being stated, your price tag for this is going to be anywhere between $250 to $300 depending on where you buy it from. And with what you're getting in here and with this, it's just phenomenal for that price tag. And that's why Double Eagle for me will always be one of my favorite mid-tier brands um <clears throat> now double eagle does offer this particular model in both the uh i'm going to call it their lower tier line which is going to be just a regular falcon fcs fces which is just a falcon etu uh, and they're going to have their higher tier line which is going to come with what i have here is the e-shooter kestrel version so you're going to the durable the reliable the rugged uh e-shooter kestrel version and i'll actually explain all that when we get to that when we get to those por portions but i kind of wanted to emphasize that this is a big improvement over the m9203 the original Dex 556 that was off the uh, that was a previous generation of UTR series, um, and like I said, because the UTR series is slowly progressing into something better, I, I just see nothing but good for the UTR series. But we'll talk we'll talk we'll talk about that later on in the video when we start talking about uh, first impressions. You get what I'm saying? So. Uh, the external build, you're going to get a polymer, a very durable nylon fiber slash polymer body. Uh, simple stuff that you can expect from any like mid-tier particular products like Simon Standard or Arc Terrace SE and stuff like that. So, you know, durable uh, polymer setups. And yes, I just did compare this to, to that Spetna Arms Edge. You're going to just get basically uh spent arms edge spent arms yeah spent arms edge basically it's going to get a simple polymer body that is going to uh be durable but lightweight so you can run around with it and run a gun and have fun and but it's still going to be durable enough where you could drop it and you know not have any uh any issues uh fitment on everything as you can hear me wobbling it around uh that's why i love having these microphones uh fitment on everything is solid it's secure it's nice in place there's no movement between upper receivers there's no movement between upper receivers. There's no uh, otherwise movement between. <coughs> yeah, there's no movement between upper receivers and what the hell is going on here? All right, excuse me. All right, so there's no movement between upper receivers, and there is nothing else that you have to really worry about uh, when it comes down to that. The tolerances on their AEGs are always top notch. I always going to say that. <sighs> Their GVBRs can use a little work with the tolerances, but it's another topic for another date. Uh, but the tolerances on the AEGs are always top notch, and they're always really great. Uh, even the tolerances on my EK47, my UTR556, uh, my DMP9, and now this one, the DEX556, is are really great when it comes down to the uh, their AEGs. Damn, I got a lot. I had a lot. I have a lot of double eagles. Shh, shh. I don't use all the guns I have in my collection, by the way. Uh, but um what i want to say here is 
Kim Puss. Okay, what I want to say here is that you're going to get, this is going to be modeled after the MDX 508 or the Max and Defense MDX 508. Uh, this is not licensed, so you are going to get parts for sets 556 by 45 and some other things and where the Maximum Defense logo would normally be at. Uh, you're getting the UTR logo. Yeah, that's the UT, that's Double Eagles UTR logo. Uh, that's what you're getting. So uh, that the UTR logo is going to be where normally the Max and Defense logo would be. Normally, the the Max and Defense MDX, the actual real steel version, comes with a um comes with a brace it comes with a pdw stock style brace it comes with a brace this one just comes with a actual standard you know max and defense style pdw stock uh you're getting the ambidextrous fire control just like the real thing um uh, and you're also going to be getting the hard curved trigger uh just like the real thing uh yeah the steel on this one could could use a little work the steel on this one could use a little little a little work hold on and I, and I and that's just more of an aesthetic thing but uh what you're going to be getting that is metal on the receiver end of the portion is you're going to be getting stock the stock guide uh the stock um the stock adjustment tabs the sling points uh your charging handle your uh bolt your not bolts but your charging handle your dust cover your s fire controls your all your fire controls that's everything from the selector switch to the um selector switch to the trigger to the mag release and the bolts bolt release and you're going to be getting on the 8.5 inch polymer max and defense mdx style handguard you're going to be getting the um uh, the sling mounts, the QD metal sling mounts where they should be QD. Also in the package, you're going to get a uh, metal uh, MDX style uh, amplifier. So yeah, you're basically getting a little MDX here in this, this, this solid little package. So you're getting a little MDX amplifier. I believe this is called the Hate Break Muzzle Booster. Um, that's I believe that's the name of it, but the Hate Break Muzzle Booster. I run it on my gas blowback too. I think it's a cool freak. I run it on. I, it's probably one of my favorite uh, muzzles in my collection right now. Out of all the muzzles I have, and I have a lot of them, um, because it's it's an amplifier. You know what I'm saying? It does make the gun sound a slightly little. Um, a little louder uh pushes all your sounds down range uh and away from you and just improves it, it just basically with on a gas blowback you can actually feel uh some slight recoil mitigation but it's not really noticeable but because at the same time it's, it's just a gas gun uh it's an airsoft at the same at the same time so but uh with that you are going to be getting like i said the 8.5 inch uh setup so the handguard itself i believe is nine inches and the barrel is eight point inner barrel is eight point or the outer barrel is 8.5 inches and then that is going to be coupled with the mdx style our maxims hate break style muzzle booster which is dope as hell it's an amplifier by the way um i like it uh, i just use it on all of my guns and i i swap between a lot of stuff because i like running different muzzles and all that you guys know how, how it is um other than that, you're going to get uh, top Picatinny, uh, pot Picatinny, uh, 22 mil Picatinny, and then you're going to get uh, M-Lock on literally the 11, 2, 6, 6, 3, 9, 7, 8, 7, 8. Uh, you all around 360 you're going to get uh you're going to get all around uh just like the max and defense mdx handguard you're going to get the full m lock uh c capability there um and that's basically it you do have everything on here looks exactly one-to-one -one. i'm actually looking at pictures of it right now everything here looks exactly one-to-one -to, -one to the max and defense uh mdx just without any um obviously licensings and trades which is not i, I don't care about that I, I get autistic sometimes but um sometimes my autism i prefer performance over uh aesthetics so for me it's it's just an oversized pdw you know what i'm saying so with that uh i'm actually kind of happy with it because i have other oversized pdws here that i that i enjoy using a lot too but uh overall looking at the actual 
Max and Defense MDX 508 uh, with uh, in comparison to the Dex 556 you're getting the ex same exact external build uh, including th they replicated everything to the exact teeth including the charging handle and um, how the fire control groups are and how you have the uh, flared and upward curved magwell at the bottom there um, Internally, you're going to get the you're going to get the Double Eagle Falcon V2 gearbox, very reliable, very rugged, battle-tested gearbox. Um, this thing has been through many generations. Uh, by the way, this thing has been through like three generations, I think, or maybe four. Jerry could, Jerry could uh, uh, correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, but I believe the Falcon gearbox is on its third or fourth generation right now. And I do know that they plan on making improvements to the current one and getting and, and getting a new generation of Falcon gearboxes out the way. Like I suggested to Jerry personally, I think having a reinforced tappet plate and an M120 spring come standard with all their guns uh, will just be a solid uh, will be solid upgrade improvements for feeding issues that may start at the beginning of your journey or come later down the road that or it may not happen at all you know what i mean it all depends on how heavy you're using this uh and the type of uh, ammo that you're running through it or the type of bbs that you're running through it um like so internally internally this thing is a rugged beast uh, i enjoy the utr series and the falcon gearboxes a lot they remind me like i would put them side by side to uh what i would call it the Sima. Like I said, like I like I said, the Sima Sima standard gearboxes, uh, Arc Terrace Xe gearboxes, uh, Spetna Arms Edge gearboxes, they're solid. Uh, this one particularly has the E Shooter Kestrel ETU in here, which is a really something I'll geek out over at a later date, which I do plan on doing that. Um, uh, the E Shooter V2 uh, is designed to run first with 16-1 gears, but you can uh, adjust it. So if you're swapping out gears, you just have to reset it to gears. So that's how you know this is a 161 gearbox, um, quick change spring system, high torque motor, uh, polycarbonate piston uh, with the half steel teeth. Uh, you're getting a polymer uh, hop up unit. The bucking is eh, the bucking is man. I, I always have complaints about Double Eagles bucking, man. Please, like, why can't we have like okay? The bucking in the Ghetto Blaster is phenomenal, 60 to 70 degrees. It's, it's what you need you know what i mean the bucking in the ghetto blaster is phenomenal like i can literally use it i can literally adjust that to about 20 30 percent of its of the hop up usage and hop two eights perfectly fine and i can go all the way up to three sixes if i wanted to but it seems like in their aegs they just like they just like uh just don't they just don't think about that. I feel like they just don't like uh, utilize that same performance standard in their AEGs. I think that needs to be a thing in their AEGs as well, where they're just utilizing uh, either a softer bucking if they're going to be using a lesser jeweled spring, which we'll talk about that here in a second, uh, or a stronger or a harder buffing if they want to pop in a uh, heavier jeweled spring or lighter, heavier jeweled spring. So. Uh, the jewels of this out the box, dude, this is very consistent, by the way. This is the compression on this is freaking insane. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the, the jewels on this is 1.0, 1.01 consistent. My version was. I was getting consistent FPS ratings uh, with maybe only a 2 to 3 FPS deviation every once in a while out of 130, 150 shots. Yes, I love the compression. I love the consistency on this. They did a good job with that particular side of things. Uh, in comparison, the older generations had okay compression of UTRs had okay compression but later down the road they would have start having compression and feeding issues. Uh, I know that both my uh, earlier generations of UTRs did. Um, still, I still use them. I think one of my, uh, one of my, I think my EK47 is either on loan or semi-permanent loan, like semi-permanent loan or whatever the case may be, or it, it's, it's somewhere, uh, with the friend or whatever. He knows what he's doing. I don't care. Uh, but. Other than that, uh, I, I like the particular, I like the particulates, uh, I like the particulate improvements they're making over time with the falcon gearbox and over time the falcon gearbox is just getting better um like i said 
some things they need to work on when it comes down to the internal working of it but i think it's just overall getting better i think i mentioned this once before but i'd like to see a utr elite series come out uh with a 13-1 gear set with a 13-1 gear set um and maybe a uh full steel teeth piston head which would be nice or piston which would be nice uh and this kind of record that way and have like a i don't i don't mind a polycarbonate piston that doesn't bother me uh but uh, full steel, full steel teeth would be nice with the 13-1 gear set and the higher torque motor because these are about 16 to 19 TPA. So if they could drop in something like a 21 to 23 TPA or even up to 27, yeah, 21 to 23 TPA, uh, not 27, but 21 to 23 TPA, that would be nice, especially with a 13-1 gear set and have like a UTR Elite series for people that want something like how I could just buy a Sima Platinum or a Spetna Arms Prime or I could just buy a you know. Yeah, or spent the Arms Prime, and I could just get uh, like crazy high rates of fire and crazy trigger response time out the box. I think we need that here in the Double Eagle lineup. I think the Falcon, a UTR Elite series, should come with the Falcon Elite gearbox, and the Falcon Elite gearbox should have a 13-1 gear set, be, and be coupled with a 14-1 gear set, full teeth, uh, full t full teeth, full steel teeth uh, piston, and coupled with a higher TP8 motor, uh, just to have that you know overall consistency there. But other than that, the actual Falcon gearboxes are nice. Uh, I'm a really big fan of them, and they just perform. And if you couple that with the East Shooter Kestrel uh, ETU, uh, you're, you're, you just have a reliable, overall reliable AEG here that's just going to run for you regardless. Because the Falcon ET, the East Shooter Kestrel uh, comes with uh, motor protection, gear detection, so detect make sure it, proper gear detection, not the one that Gate says to have, but it doesn't do, and you still freaking mess gear <clears throat> and you still strip gears and all that but we're talking about a true gear protection to where if your gears aren't cycling correctly or if there's a problem with your gears uh the etu will shut down the entire system so that you cannot damage the gun uh but <clears throat> which to me is a big thing that we need in the industry so shout out to e-shooter with the kestrel and making the kestrel a solid reliable uh etu system for the age for ages you know what i'm saying like we need that you know what i mean basically that's what it is it's a the e-shooter kestrel i will call it a reliability etu so you go, you use the e-shooter kestrel if you just want to add reliability to your gearbox you know what i mean it's the overall longevity of performance or performance longevity did you ask me like a gate if you just want i, I use I, I think of the gate as a performance etu you add that if you want increased performance you know what i mean you don't really and you know the durability and it is not really something you're really looking for you just add a gate if you want caprice uh Increased performance. So that's why, like, you guys have rarely see me run my Sima Platinum. That's because of, I have it set up to be a high-performance. It's a high-performance AEG. So it's my high-speed gun. So I only use that when I actually need to run a high-speed gun. You know what I'm saying? Um, and like I said, I have that one, like, set to the way I want it to run and shoot. And it's just, it's a phenomenal setup. Uh, and if I need a high-speed gun where I plan on shooting a lot, moving a lot, doing, a, doing all that, then, yeah, that's usually my go-to system. But... If you just want like a rugged, reliable platform, the Falcon is like a solid. The Falcon gearbox with the East Shooter Kestrel is like chef's kiss. And that and it's the East Shooter Kestrel is so good to me, in my personal opinion, that even Taiwan Gun is using them as their standard retailer upgrades in a lot of their guns. You know what I'm saying? So I, I would definitely, like I said, if you've been looking for a solid ETU, then look at the E-Shooter Kestrel. Or if you just want to buy an airsoft gun that has all of that complete with it, then obviously you're going to want to get a Double Eagle with the E-Shooter Kestrel gear, uh, ETU installed. Additional features. We can only talk about additional features now. Yay. It comes with a 120, 130 round mid cap magazine. So you already know the intended audience for that is for people like myself uh, that want mid cap mags. The actual uh, version where that comes with the Falcon ETU comes with a 300 round high cap magazine. So you can tell the difference. Most guns that come with mid caps are usually targeted towards um, 
mid-level players, you know what I mean? Uh, and usually beginner level players, their guns, those guns usually come with high caps. So you can tell the difference between, uh, sometimes, it, mo some, sometimes they come with high caps and sometimes they come with mid caps, you know what I mean? Like, et cetera, et cetera. Like my freaking Bolt AK came with the high cap. Like, why did I pay 400 bucks for a gun that came with the high cap? What, what the hell is going on here? A high-end gun, by the way. Like, the gun runs ph phenomenal, but at the same time, it came with the high cap magazine. Yeah, whatever. Anyway, uh, Bolt, you got some work to do. Anyway, uh, we'll get to you in a later, Bolt. I know that uh, I got, I'm running your gun, but we'll get to you later. But the Double Eagle, but overall, you're getting a mid-cap magazine to add to the plethora of your other mid-cap magazines. Very durable polymer. Um, you have the full bullets inside, which I like. I like that design. It looks nice. It's a P-Mag. It's modeled after the P-Mag. Um, and uh, high strength spring in it. Uh, feeds reliably well. I did do my, C my CTE testing. I did test everything. I tested the, the a lot of the functions and features of the, uh, of the Kestrel. I also tested the full auto, semi-auto feeding, uh, magazine feeding. I also tested magazine compatibility, uh, what will work in it. Uh, I, it. It fit everything from my Matrix bags, PTS mags, and my EMG mags, as well as a factory mag, the Double Eagle mag that it comes with. Um, so it's okay okay with that it's okay with that uh with with the more higher end mags like emg and pts you might have to just force fit them in like slap them in real quick so they can have a more permanent seating but with like the uh more mid to lower end m4 aeg mags uh they, they, they just seat just fine as you can hear in the background they just seat just fine um oh yeah i think i mentioned this but i didn't actually fully complete my thoughts so in the package you get uh the golf ball style m lock covers you get two of those you also get the uh maxim heartbreak or is it the heartbreak the heartbreak i think it's the heartbreak is what it's called yeah hate break hate break the maximum hate break uh cnc um muzzle break thingy a muzzle <laughs> thingy muzzle uh and then you also get a uh m-lock compatible hand stop that you normally see with the max and defense guns so yeah it comes with uh and it also comes with two polymer flip-up sights which i i immediately take off my my guns yeah I immediately take off my guns by the way uh i don't know if that's about it for additional features that i need to talk about oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. your battery compartment is in the rear where the the faux buffer tube is at the the full buffer tube, the buffer tube is metal, so that's that's a plus. Um, I believe it's metal. It feels metal. No. It 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 could not be. Um, I don't have anything metal to tap on this. Hold on. Come here. Thank you. No, it's a it's a high strength polymer. So yeah, it's a high strength polymer. Um, hold up. I want to actually double check. I'm doing this live, by the way, so I actually want to double check this to make sure that I'm feeding the right information here. Yeah, it's a high strength polymer. Um, Dean's connected, like most uh, Double Eagles products. Love you guys for the Dean's connection. Dean's is the way to go. If you're still running to Mia, if you're still living in the old days, running to Mia, uh, or if you're a new player and you haven't switched over to Dean's yet, it, it comes with a Dean's. To me, the Dean's adapter, so you're good to go with that. You could just run your standard Dean's connections, uh, and you'll have nothing to worry about in that compartment. Uh, first impressions, beautiful gun. Uh, Max and Defense MDX, it's a 508 version, beautiful gun. Uh, and I, I think that, like, it's, it's, I, I wasn't a fan of the KWA E4 because of these smaller handguard profile, meaning that I was not able to effectively put on the attachments and the accessories that I wanted in order to run it the way that I like to run my gun. So, therefore, for me, <laughs> So therefore, for me, uh, the KWA E4 just didn't get used as much, or doesn't get used as much. And a matter of fact, it's kind of gone now. You know what I'm saying? So, but the same weekend that I actually traded that off, I actually got this in the mail from Double Eagle. And there it goes. And, you're in the, and I was like, ooh, a new gun. I know who this is from already. I don't even have to say. I don't even have to name nothing. I just open up the package to see which one it is. You know what I'm saying? And it was their newer Dex 556. So I was like, yep, let's get it. You know what I'm saying? I like this. I can't wait to see how it stacks up in comparison to the earlier generations, uh, as well as its, its, its uh, current generation DMP9. 
Um, I, w I would definitely like to have the DRP9, which is the sister to the DMP9. Uh, I do like the way that that SMG is designed. I am definitely, Jerry, if you're listening to this, I'm definitely requesting that. Um, if they're available, I don't even think, I, I saw them at MOA. I don't think they're available just yet, but when they are, uh, I would definitely like to, I had the magazines for it, so I would definitely like to run it. Um, but, because uh, I was trying to find them, I just couldn't find them on the internet. I don't know, maybe I was just looking in the wrong spots. Maybe I just wasn't looking hard enough. It, it is what it is, but um, the newer generation of the UTR series is really impressive to me because you have the RLA versions, the DMP9 and the DRP9, and then you have their standard versions, which is the DEX 556, which you see, uh, which you're seeing in the background right now. Um, so for me, I definitely think that uh, they're consistently improving on the overall external and internal quality and the delivery of that quality. And I think I forgot to mention, you do hit a 6.03 millimeter inner barrel, uh, brass inner barrel with this. However, the case, I will, like I said, I think that they're doing a really solid job. And uh, this actually uh, went to replace the KWA E4 because I wanted a same PDW styled system uh, but in with a longer handguard setup so I can actually utilize my attachments and accessories the way I want to without us using additional uh, resources like a hydra mount or something like that to make it actually work you know what I'm saying because uh, I'm the type of individual that I do like to front mount my late lights and lasers and that's kind of where I like my lights and lasers to be just a little bit easier for me but the hydra mount has a purpose and it looks good by, by the way but the hydra mount does have a purpose and I think the hydra mount runs really great on smaller platform guns where you don't have as much real estate to work with uh, but Usually you guys see me running my learn amount uh, with uh, with whatever chosen optic I'm running because that's what I like um, And like I said this thing my initial impressions out the box was wow This is very good. I like I like I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying the overall Progression of the double eagle lineup and I think that double eagle fans like myself will also continually enjoy that progression as well You get what I mean? Um, so that kind of leads into our theory of use. This is a 8.5 inch model of the MDX, Max and Defense MDX. So you're getting a SBR uh, platform, um, but that is going to give you the capabilities of attaching all your attachments to the sessions that you want. Uh, and you get that cool Max and Defense style uh, feel and vibe. Uh, if you have a suppressor or a tracer unit that is the same diameter of the hate break muzzle break then you can you can put that inside the only one i had that fits for me is the t238 blue can so if i want to run this with a tracer unit i gotta run it with the t238 blue can doesn't bother me at all though uh because it's cool because it looks integrated so if you want to put a longer suppressor in there and kind of give it like a uh, honey badger look you can do that as well put a little suppressor there if you want to do like a t238 nano uh or something like that you could probably put that in there for a a much more lower profile tracer unit but other than that the the theory of use for this thing is that uh it's going to dominate it's going to pretty much dominate why because in its initial performance um i was getting 1.1 joules out the box i was getting one joule 1.1 one joule consistent out the box um obviously with the quick change spring system you can swap that out as you see fit like literally right now i can go swap this out for in 120 and 130 spring and just bump it up to 1.4 1.5 joules like it's nothing right that's not what I want to do though, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, because with the, I can if I like to, but that's not what I want to do at this moment, you know what I'm saying? Um, at this moment, I do enjoy the, what, 55, 60, 60, yeah, 60 to 60 degree, 60 meter performance out of this thing. Actually, hold on, hold on, I'm thinking of my DMP9, because I did some stuff to the DMP9 earlier today before I made this video, my mind is all screwed, so hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Rewind. Um, you're getting a solid 65 to 70 meter performance out of this thing at one joule. It performs range wise on par with my Sima Platinum with a upgraded barrel. And then I have a Unicorn Airsoft barrel in that, uh, Natural Flan 6.03 barrel in that. Uh, but, uh, but what. It could, I think it's a unicorn. It's either a unicorn or an EMG, one of those two. But it's 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 it uh it 
it gives me the same range performance of my similar range performance actually it gives me the on par range performance of the ghetto blaster the ghetto blaster up to 70 meters this bad boy up to 70 meters no problem at one jewel by the way so uh and that's with two eights you know what i'm saying so um i like it is it going to be felt or accurate out to 70 nah hell nah i wouldn't even like i will only punch it that far if it needs to be punched that far if i really want that kind of range and accuracy then i'm going to use my simon platinum if i if i if the ao calls for it uh because the ao because then i know that i can get that performance out of that but when it comes down to this in particular i know that you know you're going to get the it's best accuracy out to like up to 60 meters um, but it can be pushed up to 70 if you want to push it up to 70 and that's kind of how the ghetto blaster is too the ghetto blasters best accuracy with two eights uh, it's out to 60 meters, but you can push up to 70 if you want to so I get the same performance and I also get the same similar look and feel or this or feel to it as well with the PDW stock and how everything is it just feels like um, It feels like the ghetto blaster yeah, or just the PDW in general uh, Really like it. Uh, and I think that it performs really really great. Like I said, you're going to get uh, you're going to get uh, a roughly 18 to 22 RPS out of this thing on full auto. You can obviously upgrade this yourself if you want to uh, make improvements on that. Uh, but overall, as a factory model stock, nothing done to it. It performs like I would expect the, the Double Eagle UTR lineup to perform. Very good. <laughs> um, on here I have long term performance Damn like I always say I can't talk about that now Because we're not there yet So when we get there we'll, we'll be back within a year To talk about the long term performance I think Double Eagle is uh, on a path here To something to becoming probably the next Probably one of the best AEG and Airsoft replica companies Airsoft replica companies on the market uh, You know down the line Because they just, they're just building a really positive rep In the community right now uh, and I'm glad I can represent them on this channel. So uh, with that being stated, I'm going to put my fanboyisms to the side. And I'm going to tell you guys, if you're interested in this, then you can just go check your local retailers. But if you want to see what else they offer, there's a link in the description that will allow you to see the full Double Eagle catalog.